All right, we're moving on to video two on QGIS. And in this video, we're going to be looking at all about shape files and comma delimited, delimited files. Um, so that's like CSV files and stuff of that nature, text files. Uh, so we're going to start out with how to import shape files. We're not going to make shape files in this video. That's the next video. But in this video, we're going to import them. So by and large, as far as I know, you're always going to be importing through this layer option. So you can click layer, go to add layer, and this is where you're going to be selecting what type of layer that you're bringing in. So um, there's little icons here that kind of help you out um, with identifying what these layers mean. So a vector layer is going to be something with um, polygons or lines um, or it could be points as well if it's not in a text file of some nature. Um, this raster layer is going to be something that's like a picture or something that's pixelated. Uh, this could be a satellite image. You may have interpolated a grid soil sample. Um, likely it's going to be in a raster layer format. Um, and then the other one that you're likely going to be using is this delimited text file. So it's like a CSV file. So a lot of times these layers are used... Um, to modify, if you will, or add to another layer. Um, they can also contain XY coordinates, and you can display those XY coordinates and essentially make kind of like a shape file um, out of those layers within QGIS, kind of like what you would in ArcGIS Pro, um, where you bring in a text file and then you'd right click and click XY or display XY coordinates and it kind of turns it into a shape file like format um, same way so we're going to start out with importing a vector layer right now um, so what we're going to do here is we're in the vector layer tab if you actually clicked on the wrong one you can come down here and click on um, delimited text or raster whatever one you're importing but for now we're using vector and then you can just leave all this defaultly the same up here. And you come down here and it's your little browse button. So we'll go browse for something. Um, so in here I have a QGIS introduction. Um, so we're going to go into that tab. And then within there I have all the files that we're going to be looking at through these instructional videos. Um, for this one we're going to bring in the P70 grid soil sample information. So um, the downfall to QGIS is that it doesn't keep things as organized as, per se, like ArcGIS Pro. You know, when you open up an ArcGIS Pro and you're uploading a shapefile, it knows or it recognizes that all four of these files are linked in with one shapefile because the shapefile has multiple files. Um, QGIS does not recognize that. So when you bring in a shapefile, you can't just click on any one of these or highlight them all. You have to click on the one that says um, the SHP file. You want that file. So when you bring in that file, it'll automatically read all the other ones that are named um, the same. And it'll be able to display. If you click on anything else and bring it in, it's not going to work. So I can't stress enough to use the SHP file. So click on that. Hit op open and then click add and what that is going to do is add in our shape file now we have no idea where it's at um, so if you knew where it's at you could zoom in on it but if you want a quick and easy way to get there right click and go to zoom to layer and there is our shape file that we added in a nice bright pink color um, if you don't like bright pink colors what you do is on any layer if you just double click this is the simplicity of this double click you can go in here and change the symbology and change the sample fill to let's do a transparent fill and let's see here fill type 1 wanted to change the uh, the thickness of the bound or the boundary I think it's right here let's change that to change the 1 yeah so we'll change the change the fill to transparent and we'll change the boundary to a one millimeter so click apply click OK so we have this nice field boundary here Do you think it's still a little bit um, needs to be a little bit wider you can come in here and 
click on the shape fill. Um, you always want to go into the next tab, click into the shape fill, and then let's change this to a, let's just make it really thick. Let's take make it a four. See what that does. Oh yeah, that's a really, really thick boundary. Anyway, so you can play around with it, do whatever you want to. Um, if you did like colors, you could come in here and change your shape fill to, oops, change it to any color that you felt um, that you wanted. But anyway, we're not going to do that. Um, we're going to move on to displaying our grid soil sample points out here. So it's going to be exactly the same way. We're going to bring in another shape file. So I'll go to layer, go to add layer, add vector layer. Notice that there's these nice little shortcuts here. If you're always adding in layers, knowing these shortcuts can work really well. So control shift V, let's try it out. Control shift V, bam, we're there. Um, so that's just shortcuts. I think a control shift R is a raster. Um, I can't remember what the delimited one is at this point, but it was listed right there. So just rewind this video. So I'm gonna come in here and here is our points that are displayed out here. So instead of it being a polygon, um, this shape file is displaying our grid soil sample points. So if we click on the SHP file, hit open, and add. Now we have our nice points in here and they're really hard to see. Um, so let's go ahead and change some symbology on there. Change the size to a six. And you know that color wasn't working out too well. Um, let's go in here and change it. Change that to, gosh, what color do you want? You know, a nice green probably look pretty good. Hit apply. Let it hang on here. Oops, it didn't do anything. Still thinking. I'm clicking too fast. Nope, hopefully we don't just uh, kill the program. Just give it a little bit of time. All right, here we are. When in doubt, when the computer is thinking, just let it think. Don't click anymore or else you're for sure going to kill the software. Um, now we got our points out here. Uh, let's say we wanted to know what the number of these points are. So we can double click on there and then go to, um, actually, sorry. Let's just cancel out of that really fast. We change stuff. Go to labeling. We're not saying no labels. Let's do single label. And let's display, display the ID right now. We're gonna do sample ID. Let's do sample ID. Hit apply, hit okay. Man, this thing's really getting slow. Must not like taking videos and working all at the same time. Still thinking, can't move anything. Okay, so now we got our labels here. They're actually kind of over top um, of our points, um, and they're kind of small. So let's go in here and double click. Um, hopefully this thing just doesn't cut out on us. But in here, let's see, you gotta think about this. The size, let's change this to 20. 20 size font. And then placement. Um, let's do a, see what one does here. So this is going to move, do two just to make sure. It's going to move um, offset from point. So you can change where it's being displayed. We can have them above, we can have them off to the side, and so on. So that's just changing where the position of that point is. Uh, so let's go ahead and just put it around, click apply. Let's wait just a little bit. Yep, it's definitely getting slow on us. Let it update. Alright, so now we got our points that are displayed out here. You could bold these if you wanted to. Um, but this is just the the sample points. So start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. Um, 
One thing you'll notice in here is if we go to the attribute table, if you right click, go to the attribute table, open that up, and if you scroll all the way over, actually, let's start out. There's actually no information here about the soil test results. I just used a Cirrus app to collect the soil sample locations, and then the app defaultly puts all the stuff in here, which is probably used by Cirrus customers, but we only used it to get our XY coordinates. Um, so we need to add um, our information, our soil test results to this. So if you go to layer, now we're going to add, we're actually going to add a comma delimited layer because we have a CSV file that has our information. So if we do the little browse button and go to the QGIS introduction, see our P70 soil test results are right here. So if we go ahead and open that up. Um, defaultly, it's going to come up with this field that you can actually select if there's XY coordinates in the shape file. Um, you can actually just automatically, straight off the bat, display the XY coordinates without having to do display XY coordinates, kind of like you what you would in the ArcGIS um, format. So that's handy. Um, but in this file format, we actually don't have any coordinates. So I click No Geometry, and we can see the sample data right here. Um, this is just giving us an idea on what we're bringing in. So you have sample ID, organic matter percent, and the Malik 3 part per million. So let's go ahead and add that. And it's literally just a table. So we can open it up and it's just a table all the way down to, let's sort this, all the way down to 29 soil sampling points, which matches up perfectly with how many points we have out here. Um, so now we need, just need to do a join and relate. So if we right click on our point data, actually double click on the point data, and go to the joins tab, click the little plus button here, and then we're gonna join this layer, which will be our soil test results. And we're gonna join based off of our sample ID and our target sample ID on the um, text file and then our target field on the point data is actually sample ID, which is right here. So essentially we're just matching up columns. Um, and then there's some other buttons down here. I haven't toyed around with them a whole lot, but there might be a way that you can permanently join this. Not quite sure. Um, but essentially it's just going to join the information from this table to the points. And it's just going to be relating it to it. It's not actually going to permanently join the data with it. So if you were to X out of the software without uh, doing anything else, your join would then be gone. Um, so let's go ahead and hit OK on that and apply and hit OK and we'll let it think for a little bit. Still thinking. Okay, now we're back. So we want to display the Malik 3 part per million in this field. We can right click on here and go to actually double click on there. Sorry, it's getting kind of slow. And go to, um, we're going to have gradated symbols out here. And now we're basically going to be changing this dot color to something else. So we'll change this to our Malik 3 part per million, which is right here. So it'll be a gradated color format with the lower um, Malik 3 test results being this kind of light pink color and our higher test results being this red color. Uh, we can go ahead and classify that. And there's different classes that you can put we, or you can add on different classes. We'll get it more into symbology later. Uh, let's just do six for now and we'll just do equal count um, just for simplicity's sake. So we'll hit apply there. Let it think. Okay, so it has updated that so we can see that our points are now color coded but still displaying our sample ID numbers. Um, so we can actually come back in here and let's change our labels to display our 
um, our melee three part per million. So here's where you clip down, and we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. There's our melee three part per million, and we're gonna go ahead and add this or apply it. Click OK and wait for it to think for a little bit. And now it's updated so we can see um, our Malik 3 part per million results that are now color coded with the points. Um, I'm, you could interpolate these results into a map um, but from what I've seen on QGIS is their interpolation schemes are not the best um, when doing this so I would probably strongly suggest having a alternative software that you interpolate these results um, using and not rely on QGIS just because I think it's inferior inferior compared to other softwares that you can use and do a much better job at interpolation. So it looks like we've covered most everything. Um, we were going to look at another... Actually, we'll do that right now. So let's go ahead and just get rid of all these. So if you just click on all of them, right click and put remo or push remove layer. Uh, we're actually going to do a a data set that's a CSV file but it contains XY coordinates so it's a little bit different so come in here to our layer, add layer we're going to be adding a CSV file or a text layer and then we click the browse button and we go to this Gosen grid fall of 2000 or yeah 2019 um, and if we go ahead and open that up we can see in our sample data layer we can see we do have XY coordinates and we have soil test results linked up with it so this is where we can actually display our points right off the bat without having any issues so right here we got our X value Y value if these didn't defaultly show up um, or defaultly link up you could click on any other ones to link up the data um, with the XY coordinates so this just happens to be in a WGS 1984 format so if that wasn't right, you could change everything down here to a different coordinate system. I'll go and click Add. And then right click, zoom to layer, and we've already added our XY coordinates from a CSV file, and it kind of turned it into a shape file that's usable now. Um, and you could go in here and change the, the point size and the colors and everything else to display everything a little bit better. Um, but with that, that pretty much concludes this video on shape files and comma delimited files. So next time we're going to learn how to make shape files, not just add them. And also how to create um, different ring structures within those. So if you had like a tree in the middle of your field, I'll show how to make a shape file and then delete out the middle of the field in order to basically have a more accurate shape file or if you're applying something. Um, and also how to calculate field areas. So with that, that concludes this video. So we'll catch you next time.